everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone will change. No one stays the same. The young become the old. And mysteries do Cause that's the way of time Nothing and no one goes unchanged In life you can be sure of Ha Do no 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 Hey good morning Good afternoon Happy birthday to me Happy birthday to me and all the other Aries out there today celebrating the Ram takeover. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Had to get a little break in there. Had to get a little break in. I'm so glad I had decided to come back on my birthday. I'm so glad and grateful to be here. So many of my friends have gone on. So many of my family members have gone on. So I'm so ecstatic to be on this side of the dirt. <laughs> I don't believe you heard me. I'm so glad to be on this side of the dirt. I said, let me make sure I um, acknowledge, thank God for his many blessings. And I, I thank God from whom all blessings flow. Okay? So... I, the best way to service and to praise God in my in my mind is to get up with song, is to share the gift of song and the gift of music with my fellow human beings. So I hope that's what I did today. Um, now this article that I'm about to share with y'all, it's very important that you understand this because my birthday is significant in so many ways in not just because it's my birthday, um, because I'm just really, in the last few years, acknowledging and celebrating my birthday because we went so long without even acknowledging that it was your born day. And that's what I like to call it, my born day. But um, it's also the day of Dr. King's assassination, you know? And so we are forever linked. And not only... Was he killed? Oh, did he die on April 4th, I should say? Um, it's amazing to me that he died in St. Joseph's Hospital, and I was born in St. Joseph's Hospital. So to me, it's a bittersweet day. And for those of us who walked the earth at the time that Dr. King did, I'm sure we all feel the same way. So I just want to make sure I acknowledge that today was his death. Um, the day that he was gunned down by um, a sanctioning government. Um, and I think that the world needs to know that he was more than I have a dream speech. Um, because that's the Dr. King that they always present. They always present the Dr. King with, I have a dream. That one day my white uh, brothers and sisters and uh, no my, my children should walk hand in hand with the oppressor. Listen, we all know as black people that God is always on the side of the oppressed. 
Always. And don't you forget it. So those of y'all arrogant, hard and hearted people, you better recognize it. God is always on the side of the oppressed. And even though Dr. King was shot down, the movement continues. And the fight for freedom continues. Okay? I mean, each generation has to pay his own debt. But when I brought up Dr. King, because the part that Dr. King really doesn't talk, they don't talk much about, is... Uh, Doctor said, Dr. King said that he was going to Washington, D.C. to get his check. And people said, what? Get his check? Yeah. He was saying, I'm going to Washington, D.C. to get my check, which was reparations. Okay? And what it looked like, um, the Homestead Act, when America granted 246 million acres of land to white families only, okay? The Homestead Act was passed May 20th, 1862. The act granted adult heads of families 160 acres of public land virtually for free, but it was whites who were the main beneficiaries. In all, the government gave 246 million acres of land to mainly white families. This is a significant reason why black landowners still lack sorely behind whites. Damn what you heard. Here's the facts. The Homestead Act was enacted during the Civil War in 1862. Most of the land went to speculators, cattle owners, miners, and lodgers, according to the National Archives. Still, the act gave white Americans a head start. Much of the land had been Indian Territory west of the Mississippi, PBS reported. While all U.S. citizens, including women, African Americans, free slaves, and immigrants, were eligible to apply for the federal grant or homestead or 160 plot acre of land, white males were the main recipients of the land. Do y'all hear me? White males, again, are the culprit. Just like they got Joe Biden to take Easter and make it trans man day. Oh, I'm getting off subject. It was President Abraham Lincoln who signed the original Homestead Act between 1868 and 1934. It was granted, it granted, 246 million acres to individual Americans. Listen to this. This is what Dr. King really got assassinated for. This, and he's speaking out on the uh, Vietnam War, in my opinion. I mean, it was a bunch of little fires, but he got to a, an allegro, a crescendo when he said this. They, they, they you know. They wanted to keep him in that I had a dream mode so y'all can think he was just a sleeper. You know, Dr. King was a revolutionary. He wanted the land that this government owed us. He wanted to talk about the sanction, government sanction apartheid and government sanctioned mass murder of black people. To get 160 acres of government land for free, People had to fill out an application, improve the land for five years, and then file for the deed of ownership, reported the digital magazine, Eon. By the end of the act, 10 years later, nearly 28,000 individuals had been awarded land. More than 1.6 million white families succeeded in becoming landowners. Only 4,000 to 5,000 African-American claimants ever received final land patents. Wow, Aeon reported. <laughs> wow. At the time, Northerners and Republicans wanted to open the land to settlement by individual farmers. Southern Democrats wanted the land available only to slaveholders. Listen to that now. 
The Republicans wanted to open the land up uh, to settlement by individual farmers, yet the Democrats wanted the land available to only slaveholders. As a matter of fact, I like how my man Tim Wise describes it. I love it. And all throughout history, we've seen how whiteness has shaped public policy. So if you think about uh, the Homestead Act, one of the biggest, quote unquote, welfare programs in the history of the United States, we didn't call it a handout. We didn't call it welfare. We called it nation building. Uh, in the 1930s and 40s, the FHA programs, the VA loans in the 40s and 50s, the GI Bill, all of these programs which were in theory open to everyone, but in practice racially restricted to whites almost exclusively, we didn't call those handouts. We didn't call that welfare. We called that good macroeconomic policy and the building of a middle class. What it did was create opportunities for white working class and lower middle class folks in terms of housing, in terms of job access, in terms of schooling that were completely closed off to everyone else. And here we are, 100 years later, 50 years later, 30 years later, living with the legacy of that inequality, none of which has been uprooted, even with the progress that we've made. Because when you have people who have a huge head start, they're able to pass down those advantages to their kids and to their kids and to their kids. And so those disparities actually end up, in terms of wealth and assets, end up growing over time. Now you see why race matters. Now you see why reparations matter. It's not even a matter of begging like a lot of y'all think. It's not even a matter of that. It's a matter of what is owed to us as Americans. Period. Meanwhile, after the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 and in 1865, African Americans began fighting for the rights to the lands that they had worked long, long hours for. And many demanded their 40 acres and a mule that had been initially promised. The land was to be was was to be a form of reparations, but the reparations were never ever delivered. You understand how they've been doing this for a long time? Like qualified immunity and like police reform or like vote net. They constantly, constantly are getting blessed off our misery and off of the mistreatment of us. Union Army General William T. Sherman's Special Field Order Number 15 issued on January 16, 1865, set aside land for free black slaves. With this order, 400,000 acres of land described as a strip of coastline stretching from Charleston, South Carolina, to the St. Johns River in Florida, including Georgia Sea Islands, and the mainland 30 miles from the coast was to be allocated to emancipated, emancipated slaves in the South. Each family, each slave family was entitled to 40 acres of land in this strip, wrote Donald Watkins in his blog. Abraham Lincoln's successor, President Andrew Johnson, vetoed the order vetoed the order and the land was returned to the very planters who declare war on the United States. Now y'all think about that. Y'all think about that. So these people have put us in the bottom cast and they want us to stay there and then they want to tell you to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. What? We ain't even got no boots. And according to reparation advocate like uh, William Darity and Christian Mullen, although the Homestead Act was finally repealed in 1976, through in Alaska homesteading on public lands continued for another 10 years. The reparations movement pushed for restitution starts with the government's failure to deliver the promised 40 acres land grant to their formerly enslaved ancestors 
in the aftermath of America's Civil War. Had the land been allocated to its ownership protected, we speculate that reparations would be unnecessary today. Darity and Mullen, Office of From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century, wrote in The Economist. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be no need for reparations had they given us our 40 acres and a mule, right? Farmer John Boyd Jr., um, there's a picture of him in his, uh, during a break from bailing hay in his farm in Boyerton, Virginia, on May 27, 2021. The federal government has illegally broken a promise to pay off the debts of a group of black farmers, according to a class action lawsuit. The group hopes to pressure and on a, put pressure on officials to keep their word and to restore funding that was dropped after a group of white farmers filed legal challenges arguing their exclusion was a violation of their constitutional rights. Make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense. And until this government, who is the biggest, biggest purveyors of racism, step up and do something right by the sons and the daughters of the slaves, the enslaved Americans, people that by very virtue of them being here is a crime, a kidnapping crime. Um, and until the federal government makes it right by us, there can't be no peace. How can there? I mean, it's easy for you want to live in peace when you have been the reapers or the beneficiaries of so much good. And for the oppressed, it don't look good. It don't look like that. I always say, you know, if you saw, um, they had a group of people in the front of the elephant and a group of elef people in the back of the elephant. I mean, they could be looking at the exact same thing but have a total different perspective on what the elephant is. The, f the people that's in the front, I mean, they feeding them marshmallows. they they watching that trunk go down and pick them up and eat them. And I mean, and, and for the most part, they got a smile on their face to see they, um, themselves giving the elephant marshmallows. But for those that are sitting in the back who sees nothing but that tail going from side to side and then crap coming out the butt of the elephant, constantly smelling that nasty poop, 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 they both are looking at the elephant, but they both are operating off a total different stimulus. A total different stimulus. And this is how America is. You know? And unless the people in the front can get a taste of what's going on in the back, and the people in the back can get a movement to the front, we'll never experience any kind of equality. Because nobody will understand what it feels like to walk in somebody else's moccasin. Right? Think about it. All right, y'all. I had to bring that to you. I had to bring it today. The, Ro the Homestead Act of 1862. Very important that we understand how we got here. And that we're not just a sorry group of people. There have been nu just numerous plots to kill us. Numerous plots to keep us as a bottom cast but still we rise we rise we rise i'm not saying that we the best people that god made but i'm certainly saying that we the first and with that being said if you like what you hear please like subscribe and share the channel i will see you in the next one happy birthday to me Happy birthday to me. <laughs> See y'all.